Hi, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and welcome to the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. A little bit of a challenge today. You see, I have a brand new Casio G-Shock watch that appears to be not working. Uh, I don't know how well you can see. The display is blank there, see? So, is the watch defective? Is the battery defective? Is it time to panic and send it back for a refund? What should I do with this watch? It's very similar to a watch that I already have, and that watch works fine. Well, um, before you panic, if you're in a similar situation, let me show you how to bring this watch to life and prove that it is not defective and it actually is working. So here's what I'm going to do. All right, really, there's nothing wrong with this watch or its power supply. All it needs is a good charge. So I like to use this video light uh, that I have. It's LED. It's very bright, but it doesn't put out a lot of heat. So I can put the watch right up next to it and give it a nice good charge to get it going. Uh, so what I've got here is I just have a regular watch that is working kind of down at the bottom of this stack. And then up above it, a little closer to the light source, is the watch that needs to be charged. Over there on the right, you can see a timer that I'm using just to see how long it's going to take for this process to play out. I should also mention right now that uh, this really isn't a battery. People have pointed out that it's a capacitor for the power supply. Um, a capacitor stores power like a battery stores power, but they have very different characteristics, making capacitors better for some uh, some applications and batteries better for others. So just to keep in mind, I'm probably going to call it a battery, even though technically it's, it's a capacitor that is the power supply for this watch. All right. So, uh, according to the timer, I'm going to skip ahead and we'll see that it takes about an, a minute and 20 seconds for the watch to finally come to life. And by default, it's set to the Tokyo time zone and starting up at 12 midnight on, uh, January 1st, 2005. So that's what it's going to show for a little while. And normally when the watch is functioning okay, uh, the battery charge state is indicated in this little dial here, and it's either going to be medium or high. If it gets down to low, the watch conserves power by eliminating some of the functions. But when it's so low that it is, hasn't even come up to low yet, then you've got this little icon down here that's blinking, and that shows that uh, we're, in a, <laughs> we're in an emergency charge state here. I'm not going to do anything until you charge me more. So that's what that uh, little thing indicates. So in this state, it actually, uh, the buttons don't do anything. All it's showing you is the regular timekeeping. Uh, all other functions are not available in this particular very, very, very low power state. So you can't use the, you know, the timer countdown timer, the, the, the stopwatch, the alarms, none of those are going to work right now. The, uh, and, and the buttons just won't do anything. Now, if you get it up to a low charge state, then you can start using the buttons to do things, but some of the other functions are still unavailable until you charge that thing up more. So now I've proven the watch does work and I just need to give it a really good boost. So at this point, I took it outside. I had something to do outside anyway, so I put it in direct sunlight and let it sit there for a while to see what would happen. And this was about an hour after the watch had started to work by itself using the, the artificial light to get it going. After about 28 minutes of sitting out there, when the watch showed 128 on the dial, it jumped from the um, lower than low charge state up to the middle charge state, and then it tried to set itself uh, using atomic timekeeping. You know, it turned on its radio receiver, started to go, and you can see that uh, the, the, the atomic timekeeping receiver was showing level one most of that time. It would occasionally jump up to level three, but it really wasn't going to work right because the watch was still set to Tokyo time. So I think it was trying to set itself using the Japanese uh, atomic time, you know, radio frequencies, and so it just wasn't going to work. It tried that for about five minutes, and then it stopped trying. But at this point, uh, now that it was up in a medium charge state, I could start using the buttons and I could manually set some things on the watch. So when I finally did that at about the 145 mark there, I went ahead and changed first to the Denver time zone or the mountain time zone in the U.S. because that's where I am. And then once I got it set to that, um, since we're several hours behind Tokyo, Instead of showing January 1st of 2005, it was now showing December 31st of 2004, and it was showing about 
9.45 a.m. at this point. So uh, all I did was manually set the time to 12.45 a.m. because I wanted the watch to try to automatically set itself and it would normally do that about 1 a.m. So that's why I, I manually set the time that way and then I just let it sit. So when the watch finally showed 1 a.m., it tried to set itself. The actual time when it was doing this was 12.55 p.m., so not the most ideal time for atomic time reception, but a lot of times it does work, so I decided to let it try. And it tried that, and after about four minutes, uh, I was unable to do it, so it stopped again. So then just a few minutes later, when the watch was showing uh, about 1.12 a.m., and the actual time was about 107 p.m. I went ahead and did a manual receive. So I held down the button on the lower right side to try to make it get the atomic time manually instead of doing it at the automatic designated time. And this time, after a few minutes, it worked. And so the watch set itself, and now the actual time and the time on the watch were in agreement at 1.11 p.m., and it also correctly set the date to the proper month, day, and year. So at this point, I was good to go. The, the charge state of the power supply was still just at middle instead of high, but I left it out there in the sun to see how much longer it would take for it to finally go up to high. And so I just left it running to see what would happen, and at about 1.34 p.m., it, uh, it did show that the battery was up at the high charge level. This was about an hour and 40 minutes after I had set the watch outside in the direct sunlight to, to give it a good, good boost of a charge. And therefore, it was about two hours and 40 minutes since I got the watch to initially start working uh, underneath that artificial light. So it took a little while. It's a little bit of a process to get the thing going. And, uh, but it worked. And in, in your situation, you could probably get away with doing this. Just, uh, you don't have to have the watch sitting outside. You could probably just set it near a window where you've got sunlight coming in. I would caution you against putting it like in a, in a car in direct sunlight because it just gets so hot inside a car and that heat is not great for the watch. But if you've got it in an interior window or just a space where it gets a lot of good, strong light, that would be a way to revive it if it ever got down to such a low power state. Or if, like me, the watch was brand new and when you pulled it out of the box, it looked like it just was broken or something, but it wasn't broken. It was just, it just needed a good charge. I figured, and this, this happened to me with one other G-Shock uh, Casio watch that I had that had the tough solar function. I figured that watch, that watch before and this watch here probably sat on a shelf somewhere in a box in the dark for months and months and months until whatever power it might have had when it initially came out of the factory, was completely drained out. So it just needed a good charge. And in both cases, with that other watch that I had before, and now with this watch, after a really good strong charge, it's working fine. So there you go. I've proven the watch is fine. It's, it's a really good looking watch. I, I, I like this one. And, um, well, see, I've seen some reviews online where people maybe had said, oh, I ordered this watch, and it was one of these tough solar watches, maybe not this one, but a similar one, and people were like, oh, it was no good, it was dead on arrival, so I sent it back. <sighs> Before you start believing a review like that, remember, the watch was actually doing what it was supposed to do, and if you just take a little bit of time with it, you can make it work just fine. No need to send it back. That's the whole point of my making this video. All right, so uh, thanks again for watching The Good Timekeeping Show, and I'll be back on YouTube once again very soon with yet another informative, exciting video for you.